In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, dear Bishop-elected Monsignor Mauro Lali, we are delighted today because we have with us that uh, we have with us the bishop elected of Archbishop, sorry, Archbishop of Papua New Guinea. So we have here with us. Thank you. I very am much. not the Archbishop of Papua New Guinea. I am Archbishop Nuncio in Papua New Guinea. Nuncio. It's too big, Papua New Guinea. Thank you for <laughs> Thank you for celebrating uh, the Holy Mass for us, His Excellency. And this Holy Mass, we pray for the souls of Estela Espera, Elenita Ortiz, Primitivo Galinato Jr., Rodolfo Tanio Jr., Donald Badoy, Arsenia Misa, Romejo Maligalic Jr., and Roy Caballero. We also bring the thanksgiving offerings of Roger Centeno, Lenny Santos, and for the birthday of Remelin Pelo Bello. And in this Holy Mass also, the member of Legend of Mary, they will say the promise uh, to Mother Mary. For those who had not received the us on the Ash Wednesday, still can receive after this Holy Mass. In uh, ancient times, this Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent, was exactly the first day of Lent as the catechumens were in these days enrolled in the number of the elects of the young church that is in the candidate for baptism. The narration of Jesus' temptation is the gospel today in the wilderness represents an emblematic model of the life of Christians. May the Holy Spirit grant us the light to see in the beginning of this celebration of the Holy Mass, to see what are the temptations that make us wander away from Christ, and above all, grant us the strength to face them with docility to the Word of God. Because we often prefer to seek our selfish interest rather than the bread of the world of God, Lord have mercy. Because we strive to build our life according to our own projects, forgetting 
God's plan for us. Christ, have mercy. For all the times we worship the idols of our own interests and wishes, which make us neglect the true service, the true service of God. Lord, how mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, to the early observances of Holy Land that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God spoke to Noah and his sons, See, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, also with every living creature to be found with you, birds, cattle, and every wild beast with you, everything that comes out of the ark, everything that lives on the earth. I establish my covenant with you, Nothing of flesh shall be swept away again by the waters of the flood. There shall be no flood to destroy the earth again. God said, Here is the sign of the covenant I make between myself and you and every living creature with you for all generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I gather the clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the cloud, I will recall the covenant between, between myself and you and every living creatures of every kind. And so the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all things of flesh. The word of the Lord. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, Lord, her faithfulness and love for those who keep the Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love 
for those who keep your covenant. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Christ himself, innocent though he was, died once for sins, died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life, and in the spirit he went to preach to the spirits in prison. Now it was long ago, when Noah was still building that ark, which saved only a small group of eight people by water, when God was still waiting patiently that these spirits refused to believe that water is a type of a baptism which saves you now, and which is not the washing off of physical dirt, but blades made to God from a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has entered heaven and is at God's right hand, now that he has made the angels of the dominations of powers his subjects. The word of the Lord. does not live on, lead, on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he remained there for forty days, and was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Bells tolling, not because I'm leaving. <laughs> Last uh, Wednesday, as Wednesday, some of you, I don't know, maybe only some of you, have started uh, liturgically and correctly the Lent season. Today, first Sunday of Lent, to better prepare our hearts for this time of prayer, fasting and charity, time of prayer, fasting and charity. The gospel refers to episode of the three temptations of Jesus in the desert. 
before starting his public life. Uh, we said that the gospel refers to, and uh, this means that we should remember, remember well, this episode of the three temptation. Unfortunately, for the things of God, our memory often does not work well. So, in order to assist my and your memory, I wish to mediate the full passage and meditate the full passage of the temptation as it is presented in Matthew Gospel. Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Then the devil left him and angels appeared and looked after him. The three temptations of Jesus summarize every kind of temptation and all kind of battles the children of God must fight against the devil. The first temptation of Jesus, need and trials. If you are, do you remember the first temptation? If you are the son of God, Satan said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to turn into loaves, in bread. Man in this nature is what we can say, which is the man. The man is the being in need. We are the being in need. Here, the need is represented by the bread. A Satan, he knows very well that, that we need, and we need bread. The risk is that uh, needs might be felt ab as absolute necessity. Our needs become absolute. Absolute necessity and man might bend down and worship whoever is able to satisfy these needs for him. We may worship, uh, maybe we may worship uh, money. Why? Because money liberates us from our needs. We may try to make uh, a good impression to others. We need to show off. We need uh, to make our self-image at all cost, because we feel gratified by it. And then which is our reply, or Christian reply, face to this devil's temptation? How to reply? The answer to overcome this temptation is when our needs are made no more absolute, May our needs made are made relative. That means we are able to relativize our needs. The reply of Jesus was, man does not live on bread alone. The second temptation is temptation, power, and devil. Next, taking him to a very high mountain, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. I will give you all this, he said, if you fall at my feet and worship me. Man, every man, is weak 
and feels protected when he can possess or possess power. When he feels powerful, and we too, we are in our comfortable position when we feel powerful. It does not matter what kind of power it is. It can be a political power, can be financial power, every kind of power. Usually, this selfish way of exercising power is obtained by violence and defended by deceit. If you fall at my feet and worship me, it's the same to if you accept to follow the logic of injustice without any hesitation, then all will be yours. Many times success, success derives from a pact with the devils. You know? You know what means pact? Pact with the devils. We find the answer to overcome this temptation in Jesus' words. You must worship the Lord our God and serve him alone. Only the adoration of God liberates us from worshipping, worshipping power, hypocrisy, injustice, and compromise. The third temptation. Jesus is tempted by the word of God. Very strange, this temptation. If you are the son of God, draw yourself down. For scriptures say, says, he will put you in his angel's charge and they will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. The devil promises to Jesus a religious way to avoid death. Religious way to avoid death. As quoting Psalm 90, he reminds Jesus of his right to be saved from death and from all dangers because God himself promised help to those who trust in him. Devil, Satan, he knows very well the scripture, the word of God. He, he used, tempted us, as was for Jesus, with the word of God. Satan used religious way to tempt us. A, we have to find the reply, the answer. We find the answer to overcome this temptation in Jesus' words. We must finish to testing God. Scriptures also says, you must not put the Lord, your God, to the test. To be clearer, woe to those who use God against God. This is a big risk for us. To use God, to use our religion against God. Woe to those who use his word in order to escape his will. The scribes and Pharisees were expert, very expert in this. And maybe we, men and women, men and women of church, 
behave in the same way, maybe. The promises of God must be welcomed with trust as words that free us from anguish and uncertainty. But they should not be used, the promise of God, should be, should be not used to put God to the test, to test him according to our own desires. Our desires is not always the God willing, and God willing is not always the same God desires. The reply was, in the Gospel of Luke, we find, save yourself if you are the king of, of the Jews. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Authentic religion begins when there is fear of God. Fear of God. When we submit ourselves to God's will. God is the Savior. But uh, this does not mean that we can determine how and when God should manifest his saving action toward us. We are not able. God is the Savior, of course. But we are not able to say how and when God should manifest his saving action. Authentic and mature faith, mature faith, is to believe in God even when we cannot experience his intervention in our life. This is important for our faith. Eh? We believe in God even when we cannot find God. We cannot experience his intervention in our life. How many times in our prayers we repeat, God, why you are not here in this moment? You know, remember... Remember, but you are all young people. I am old man. But you, you, you remember the 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 famous uh, uh, movie, 1997, uh, Devil's Advocate. Do you remember? Uh, directed by Edwin Ackford, I think. Hmm? And uh, of course, Al Pacino. He was playing the role of, uh, of devil. And Al Pacino, he defined, he said, who is God in this uh, movie? Who is God? He replied, this is important about what, uh, he replied, God is an absent master. Absent master. Hmm? Then it's important for our faith to believe in God even when we cannot experience his intervention in our life. Because Satan always, he is telling us, even in silent way, telling us, remember you, that God is God, but he is absent is not present in your life it is to consider the go the goods of the earth as a gift and not as a possession with the risk of making them more important than god himself for our life we need to transform our selfishness into love that gives itself we need to transform our pursuit of success and glory into the sharing of our life until the end. The logic of power, we have to manage the logic of power into a logic 
of service. Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In order to be faithful to our Christian vocation, we need to be ready to follow Jesus into the desert. This is our Lent time. We need to learn from him how to recognize the voice of the tempter in all temptation that allure us to the exclusive search for material well-being well and draw us to worship, power, and pleasure. The weapons used by Jesus in his fight against the evil one are the weapons of land penance. That means prayer, fasting, and the word of God. May our land commitment be that of listening and meditating the Holy Scripture more often as a way to overcome our selfish, selfishness and our passions. Let us commit ourselves to meditate every day on the land, land timing, every day, a simple page of gospel, or recite psalm, or a part of the divine office or other form of community prayer, like rosary prayer. This is our desire, and amen. Let us renew our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Almighty Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made consumptual with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and at Pontius Pilate. He suffered dead and was buried, and rose again of the twelfth day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophet. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess to this for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The time has come. In today's Gospel, we read how Jesus was uh, driven out into the desert by the Holy Spirit in order to do battle against the devil and his temptations. We pray that during this Lent, Jesus will be our champion who will fight for us to conquer sin in our lives and so heal our relationship with God, our Father. Let our response be, Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. May Francis, our Pope, 
received strength from God to fulfill his mission. May he teach the truth in love, showing clearly the difference between truth and error. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. May those in authority receive grace to resist evil. May they defend the weak and bring blessings to our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. May we come to understand even more deeply what God has done for us. May we welcome the new covenant with thanksgiving and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. May we bring Jesus to people who find themselves in the wilderness of isolation and loneliness. May the light of God's love give them strength and bring hope into their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. May our children read the Bible in a way suitable to their age. May they learn how God loves us, speaks to us, and calls us to live as his children. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we accept you as our Savior and our Lord. Father, you sent your angels to assist and comfort Jesus. Strengthen us, we pray, so that we may live faithfully by his teaching. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings from with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. To Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from uh, earthly food, we consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpents taught us to ease out the living of malice, so that celebrating worldly the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to be eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they, might, they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, uh, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, a drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Pierre Battista, our Patriarch, Bruno, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Especially today, we pray for the souls of Estela, Elenita, Primitivo, Rodolfo, Donald, Arsenia, Remejo Roy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's commands, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord.
Good morning to all. Uh, first Sunday of Lent here. Uh, no, sorry. <coughs> Announcement of the Holy Cross Parish. First Sunday of Lent, 24 of March, 2024. Number one. We will have Lenten pilgrimage on Monday, 1st of April. We will visit St. Paul Church in Papos and other places around. Please register yourselves on the list in the sacristy with contribution, 10 euro each person. We will leave at 8 a.m. from the Sita round Roundabout. Number two, during the Lenten season, we pray the Stations of the Cross every Friday at 6 p.m. in the church. We have also the Stations of the Cross in our garden to be used by any groups or families to pray. Number three, Bishop Bruno Bariano cordially invites young people to participate in our diocesan youth meeting on Saturday 30th of March at St. Joseph's Sisters Convent in Larnaca from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. This event is open to all young people from 12 to 30 years old. Please register your name on the list in the sacristy. Number four, on Friday, 1st of March, 2024, Pope Francis has appointed Monsignor Mauro Lali as Archbishop and Apostolic Nuncio of Papua New Guinea. We give thanks to God for the time that he has given in service to the church as the church the appears for the Apostolic Nunciature here in Cyprus, and especially his presence and service in the Holy Cross Parish. We congratulate him and accompany him with our prayer in his new mission and service in Papua New Guinea. Thank you. Thank you. You know that uh, everything have uh, the beginning, everything have his hand. And uh, in our life, as a priest, as missionary, as a Pope representative, uh, I had many begins and many ends. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know you, uh, that I have a romantic heart. It is, is very hard for me. Eh? For that reason, I have no time for forward. I just uh, greet uh, formally the public authority and, uh, and the church's heads and the Orthodox Church uh, Archbishop. And uh, I have no time because I have, I have to reach Italy after their ordination, not so solemn ordination like uh, of the your auxiliary bishop Bruno, but uh, always ordination. And then I have to reach Papua New Guinea soon because you know the Holy Father foreseen that he want to go there in Papua New Guinea and around Papua New Guinea. Mm? And I have to go to prepare something before he come. Then uh, thank you for your uh, prayers. That was in Cyprus. Normally, our mission is three years, four years. I spent six years in the Middle East because you can understand the reasons. And uh, starting from North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Middle East, and now the shortest mission for me was Cyprus. But I hope the the, the, the incisive mission, because now you have your, wish, your bishop, it's true. You have your uh, apostolic enunciator, it's true. Uh, and you have something more that you discover after, okay? Then uh, thank you for your help. 
your prayer and we keep you know, in romantic uh, touch not only feelings but only not, not only a prayer but that you have to pray for me because I need your prayer thank you and uh, and uh, all, 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 always and uh, also uh, your uh, feelings human feelings. I hope to visit again Cyprus. Normally in our life we have the hidden rule or all that we don't use to come again in the place we was working. But uh, I can do the exception for Cyprus, you know, because it was too short. <laughs> Thank you and God bless you. The Lord be with you. Please. We are in competition for. <laughs> May Almighty God, and I give you the. It is the last blessing, that the apostolic blessing of the Holy Father to you all, uh, and your uh, uh, dear and your family. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace and glorify the Lord in your life. So we will be giving ashes after this Mass to those who stay in the church if you haven't received them. And tomorrow's Masses are uh, 7.30 in the morning and 6.30 in the evening, the Annunciation of the Lord. For many of you, it's a holy day of obligation. So those are the two Masses tomorrow.
Pitaget, Putraget, Sprinter Santa get Namin Namin. Sri Sudo could see at a Pratanava. Swamini Karunakala Menevern. Please to me, Karunakala Menevern. Swamini Karunakala Menevern. Please to me, a pe Pratana, Savadala Menevern. Please to me, a pe Pratana, give Swadala Menevern. Please to me, a pe Pratana, give Swadala Menevern. Paramandala Vede in the Pitavana de Vieni. Okay, Nidas Kalau, Putro and the Viani, Padaya, Kulamenever, Spin to Santo and the Viani, Padaya, Kulamenever, Sudo, Kurusiani, Supersid the Tevatro, Eka de Viani, Loka Papua Nisa, Billy Pandu, Pukota, Opukanala de Deva Jabalaco, Jesutuman Tama. At Karaganalada, Sri Kuruseni, Christiani Varunke, Kavisha should do Sri Kuruseni, Malaun Kere Ugata, we may go to Sri Kuruseni, Nirapada, Padro, within Nange, Pituahaleo, Sri Kurusieni, Aparaksha, Kanavasuni, and the Antamagapena now, Sri Kurusieni, Aparaksha, Kanavasuni, Man Mula one gay, Marge Hasreo, Sri Kurusieni, Aparaksha, Kanavasuni, and Sina in Gay Sariateo, Sri Kurusieni, Aparaksha, Kanavasuni. Tugi dilindun ke sanasi mau Sri Kurusieni. Aparaksha karnavasudi. Tal parai madna u Sri Kurusieni. Aparaksha karnavasudi. Udagwehi naspetya u Sri Kurusieni. 